Hello everyone, the topic of our video today is hybrid network connectivity. Let us start with what is hybrid network connectivity and why do we need it? The hybrid network connectivity is simply the connection between your on-prem system or data center to Google Cloud. When you migrate your system to cloud, you cannot do it in big bang, but gradually, step by step, especially for the big enterprise company where the IT system is really huge and complex. Therefore, maintain the hybrid connectivity between on-prem and cloud until the migration is complete is one of the critical requirements. And why do we choose the hybrid connectivity for this video? First of all, the topic is super important. In practice, if you are the member of migration team and got tasked to support the migration, you will understand the criticality to choose the correct connection option for your migration from design point of view and understand the connectivity to operate it later on. And because it's so important, there are multiple questions of the hybrid in your Google exam as well. Also, there are multiple types of hybrid network connectivity with different characteristics, requirements, and conditions, make it so difficult to understand. And even you have read so many Google official documents and different blog posts or see multiple videos, sometimes it's still confusing between them. Out of which, peering and interconnect are the most confusing to understand the difference between them and when do we use what is really difficult task. Addressing this issue, we will explain on hybrid connectivity type in detail, identify their typical characteristic and the use case that they should apply and will help you understand this better. So, moving to the agenda for this video, we have provided the definition of the hybrid network connectivity as well as the problem statement of why we're doing this video. And next, we will provide to you the explanation of the six connectivity ties and their characteristics, also performing the comparison between them. We also focus to compare between peering and interconnects to clear out the most of the confusing point out of the hybrid connectivity topic. And finally, we will explain and walk you through some examples of the practice question taken from the exam topic. This slide will show you six types of hybrid connection which divide into private IP and public IP access. From network connectivity point of view, there are published, dedicated, and fair. Between private and public IP address, it's quite uh, self-explaining, so I will not go into that detail, but let's see the difference between public, dedicated, and fair. For public, the data transfer between your on-prem system to Google Cloud will be transferred over the public internet like this, and you can achieve that by using public IP or cloud VPN. For dedicated, there will be a physical link between your on-prem and cloud. And I refer the connection use of VLAN, a physical cable to pipe directly between your on-prem and Google. With this, the data transfer between your on-prem and Google will not transit over the public internet, but via this dedicated physical link. This, of course, will have the benefit of performance that I will show you later in this video. For share, instead of having the direct physical link to Google as sometimes it's not possible, you will set up the physical link to one of the service provider near you. This service provider will then connect you dedica dedicatedly to Google. Therefore, share can sometimes call a subset of dedicated. Please also note that this service provider can also serve the other company as well as the other service provider as well. So for that reason, this connectivity tie is called SARE. Let us review some key terminologies and definitions as these will help you to understand the topic later. First of all, Google Workspace, formerly known as G Suite, including Gmail, Google Drive, Google Meet, Google Calendar, and so much more. Google API include Google Managed Service, which can be accessed in both public and private IP address. 
This includes Google Map, Google Translate, and the other product like Google Cloud Run and BigQuery. Google Resources are the resources that different companies provision and manage in Google at their own project and VPC. Here you can see two presentations like example.com and abc.net. Both Google API and Google Resources are part of Google Cloud. The main material that I use for this video are many from these two documents from Google. Number one is the blog, Product Networking Google Cloud Network Connectivity Option Explained. And number two is the Google official document, Network Connectivity Doc How To To Product. Now, let's map each of the connectivity type with the number before going into detail. One with public IP, two with cloud VPN, three direct peering, four carry peering, five dedicated interconnect, and six partner interconnect. The simplest connectivity option to connect your environment to Google Cloud is to use the standard network connectivity that you already have. Um, under this, there are two options available, using Cloud VPN for private IP and Public IP for public IP address uh, asset. And because both of them are based on the standard network connectivity, uh, this solution will only fit in case that you do not require big bandwidth. And let's review two of them now in detail. Number one, public IP address, if you do not need the private access but only the public, and the bandwidth of your standard internet connection is meeting your business requirement, then you can simply just use the public IP address. So here you will see the data chances from your on-prem system, example.com, via Google in this public internet library. Google service include a Google workspace, Google API, and the Google resource that you provision in Google Cloud, here example.com, and all of them will only be accessed by the public internet. I would like to give a hint that for security reasons, not so many companies want to explore their provision resources with the public IP, so this kind of connection, public IP address, will not often use for the Google resource. Regardless of the connectivity that you choose, it's always the best practice to encrypt your data before chances and also take care of further security aspects like authentication and authorization on top of this. So moving to the summary of the public IP address, for internet connectivity, it will use the standard internet and it will not provide the big bandwidth. It also provides the public to public IP address. Number two, cloud VPN. If you still want to transfer the data via the standard internet, which already available and the bandwidth already meet your business requirement, but now you will require the private to private IP address access, then viewing the cloud VPN would be your best option. So here you will see again that data chances from your on-prem to Google via the public internet like that. However, there will be encrypted tunnels view. So the traffic flow between on-prem and Google via this VPN tunnel. Cloud VPN must be set up in your VPC in your cloud project. This configuration allows users to access the private address on the resort in your VPC from on-prem computer, which also using the private address as well. The data will be encrypted in one of the VPN gateway and decrypted in another VPN gateway. The high availability VPN or sometimes called HR VPN offer the best SLA in the industry, which is guaranteed uptime of 90.99%. In practice, Cloud VPN is used to connect from your on-prem to Google Cloud resources for and for Google API. Private Google Access for on-prem should be extra set up. Moving to the summary of Cloud VPN. It's also use the standard internet just like from public IP address. It does not provide the big bandwidth maximum of 
2.5 gigabyte per second, but it will provide the private to private access. Now, let us compare quickly between public IP address set and cloud VPN. Here we have three kinds of Google service, including Google Workspace and Google Cloud with Google API and Google Resort. Two companies named example.com and apc.net, each of them will have their resort provision under Google Resort here. As you can see, they have their own VPC setup. So two of them will choose the standard internet to transit their data from on-prem to Google. But what could be different? If APC.net use public IP address to access to Google, then they be able to access all of the Google service, but all of them under public IP address. For example.com, if they choose cloud VPN, then they can access to their own resort with the private IP address as well to Google API with the private IP address as well. Please remember that under your, their VPC, they must set up the cloud VPN and also the private Google access for on-prem on top of that to achieve private IP address access for Google API. Now, if you do not need private address connectivity and your current standard internet connection is not good enough for your business requirement, then peering could be the best option. Conceptually, peering will get your network as close as possible to Google public IP address and there are also two options available, direct peering and carry peering. Number three, direct peering. Direct peering is a good option if your on-prem data center is close to one of the Google POP or can be connected point of present or Google Edge network. They are available in more than 100 locations and 33 countries around the world. Direct peering will enable you to establish the direct peering connection between your business network and Google Edge of network and exchange the high throughput cloud traffic. When established, direct peering will provide the direct path from your on-prem network to Google service including all of Google Cloud products that can be exposed to the public IP address. The traffic from Google to your on-prem also based on the direct path. In this configuration, all traffic to Google will go over this direct link, while the traffic to the other side will be done on the normal, regular internet connection, just like this. One of the sentence that you often hear about direct peering is that it exists outside Google Cloud. And what does that mean? This because direct peering does not use any Google Cloud resource such as interconnect connection, VLAN attachment, or cloud router. Google themselves will manage the peering configuration. And for that reason, there's also no setup or maintenance cost. We will go into that detail when we compare it with the interconnect. So here is summary about the direct peering. It will use the dedicated physical link. It provides a huge bandwidth up to 100 gigabytes per second. It requires that your on-prem system to be close to one of the Google POP. And it provides public to public um, IP address access. One interesting about that is that if you can, if you can uh, set up the cloud VPN on top of that, then you can achieve the private to private access as well. For carry peering, number four. So for whatever reason that you cannot set up the direct peering to Google, then for example, that your on-prem data center is nowhere near to Google cloud point of present, then the carry peering could be the good choice. In this configuration, you will connect directly to one of the carry peering partner and they will connect you to Google. All of the traffic to Google will go over this link, while the other traffic will continue over the standard internet connection like that. For carry peering, uh, this have quite similar characteristic to the direct peering, so here is their summary. They will use the dedicated physical link, but not direct, but via the service provider. It also provides a huge bandwidth up to 100 gigabytes per second. And in this case, on-prem does not require to be close to Google POP. 
It also provides the public to publish IP address assets. The same like in direct peering. If you can connect the cloud VPN on top of that, then private to private assets can be achieved as well. The last two options, interconnect, including dedicated and partner. Interconnect are similar to peering in that the connection between your network and Google as close as possible with the physical link. Interconnect are different from the peering in that they give you the opportunity of the private asset. With the dedicated in connect number 5, you will install the link directly from your get network to Google by choosing the 10 GB per second or 100 GB per second Pi. This present in the solid line like that and this is quite similar to the peering. In addition to that physical setup, you also provision a visual attachment service which presented in the dust line and this will help you to achieve the private asset. This is the logical setup over the physical link. This configuration inside of your Google resource that you provision, in this case example.com, will allow you to access of your private IP address from your on-prem to your resource in Google, also under the private IP address. The traffic to your Google Cloud VPC also go over this physical link and not transfer in the public internet. So just like uh, cloud VPN, the interconnect must be set up within your cloud project and it requires the cloud resources just such as interconnect connection, VLAN attachment and cloud router. And for this reason, maintenance cost is required. So here is some summary of the dedicated interconnect. It will also use the dedicated physical link just like in peering. It provides the huge bandwidth also up to 100 gigabyte per second. It requires your on-prem to be close to one of the Google POP per uh, point present for the dedicated case. And it also provides the private to private access. Six partner interconnect. If for any reason that you cannot set up the dedicated interconnect to Google for huge bandwidth and private asset, for example, your on-prem is nowhere close to Google point of present, then the partner interconnect could be the good choice. In this configuration, you will connect yourself physically to the partner service provider and let this partner service provider connect you to Google. On top of that, you also need to set up the interconnect under your resource that you provision in Google. Here is example.com. The character of the partner interconnect is quite similar like the direct one. So let's go through that. It will use the dedicated physical link, not directly but via a service provider. It also provides the huge bandwidth up to 100 gigabyte per second. In this case, because if not connect to Google directly, then it does not require your on-prem system to be close to Google for your present. And of course, it provides the private to private connectivity. Now, let us compare the peering and interconnect by the same example that we had before, having two companies, abc.net and example.com, and see how the difference. Of course, the similarity here is that they use the physical link, so they will achieve the high bandwidth up to 100 gigabyte per second. But for abc.net, if they use peering, then they can access to all of the Google service, include Google Workspace, Google API, and Google Resort, but all of them under the public IP address. For example.com, if they use dedicated interconnect, they can access to the Google API and Google resources of their resource that they provision under Google Cloud, example.com, by private IP address. Please remember to achieve that, then on top of the physical peering, they must set up the interconnect in their resources here. And also for the API private asset, then the private Google asset for on-prem must be set up on top. For abc.net, why using the direct peering and if they can do the configuration for cloud VPN on top of their resource, 
Then again, they also can achieve the private to private asset. And with the private Google access for on-prem on top of that, they can also access to Google API via private access as well. In the official document of Google Network Connectivity dot how to to product, they also have the clear table to demonstrate the difference between the peering and interconnect. So let us review it together step by step. Number one, for peering, it can be used to connect to Google Cloud, for example, access to VM through the Cloud VPN, but do not require it. For interconnect, it requires Cloud Google Cloud. What does that mean? So here, Google Cloud Resort includes Google API and Google Resource. As mentioned before, for security reasons, it's always recommended that for this kind of resources, it should be accessed by a private IP address instead of Publish. For that reason, in case of APC.net, they are now using the direct peering, but they can put the cloud VPN on top of that so they can achieve the private access for Google Cloud. For exam topic, then of course, using the dedicated interconnect, they won't be able to access to Google Cloud. Second, direct peering will give you the direct access from your on premise to Google Workspace and the other Google API with full sales of Google Cloud product. For here, uh, Interconnect does not give you the access to Google Workspace, but give you the access to own Google Cloud product. And it's referred to that picture. In case of APC.net, you can access to Google Workspace and Google Cloud, but own under public IP address. For example, .com, you cannot access to Google Workspace, but you can access to Google Cloud with the private IP address. Don't forget to um, configure the private Google access from on-premise to achieve the Google API uh, private access. As next, peering had no setup or maintenance cost because the setup of the peering is completely under management of Google and they do not use any Google Cloud resource for the configuration. Why is it different in Interconnect? The maintenance cost is there because for using Interconnect, you have to use the Google Cloud resource for setup such as Interconnect connection, VLAN attachment and Cloud router. From the prior point of view, Peering appear to be cheaper when it is standard rate for interconnect, meaning more expensive. Both of them also connect to Google Edge Network, so there are no different here. Um, the next point, to change the destination IP address rank for on your on-prem network, you have to connect contact Google. This is because peering is under management of Google. So if you change any IP address of your on-prem, then you have to contact Google for that chain. Differently, in interconnection, so the chain is completely under your management because you owe the setup of the interconnect. So any chain in the IP address from your on-prem, you would can change people to change that by yourself. The last one, router to your on-prem network do not appear in any VCP network or Google Cloud project. So it's quite the same that no Google resource is associated into the peering setup when interconnect the router got learned uh, from your VPC setup. In the plot, they already provide a really comprehensive table to compare between all of the connectivity. However, I will just pick up the most critical point and present to you. So here is the table. From the private IP address accessible, you will achieve the private access with the cloud VPN and interconnect, and you cannot do it with the public IP address and direct peering. From the bandwidth point of view, it would be much lower in the public IP address and cloud VPN because you rely on the standard network connectivity and it's with up to only 3.5 GB per second. When we're peering and interconnect, thanks to the physical link between your on-prem and Google, you can achieve up to 1,000 GB per second. From the use case recommendation, so with the public access, like public IP address and peering, you recommend to access to Google Workspace and Google Public API. And with the private access, Cloud VPN and Interconnect is recommended for using to access to Google Cloud, including Google 
private API and the resources that you pre provision in Google for your company. One interesting about peering is that with the cloud VPN setup on top of that, you can also access to Google Cloud with private asset as well. From SLA, it is NA for public IP address and peering. But for cloud VPN, you can achieve to 99.9% with classic and 99.99% .99 with the high availability VPN with the provided that the network service provider also functions well. And the same um, SLA is provided for interconnect as well. Finally, the this season tree, I take the exact uh, picture from the blog and present to you. So the first question where you have to ask before choosing any kind of connectivity is that whether you need the private asset or not. If the answer is no, then you can go down and choosing the public IP address or peering. If the answer is yes, then you have to think of using cloud VPN or interconnect. The second question you must ask is that whether the network connectivity standard one that you now rely on is meeting your business requirement. If the answer is yes, then you can go on and use the public IP address for the public or using cloud VPN for the private IP. If the connection of the internet does not satisfy the bandwidth that you need your business for your business, then you have to move using the physical link and then the peering or interconnect is the option. Now, if you are somewhere close to Google POP or not, if the answer is yes, then you can set up the direct peering in case of public asset or de um, dedicated interconnect in case of the private asset. And finally, if the answer is no, then the partner interconnect for private or carry peering for public should be chosen. At a final step, let us review some questions from exam topic for you. Question 56. Create private connection between your instant on computer engine and your on-premise data center, and it requires the connection at least 20 gigabytes per second. So I already highlight two key information in the question. Number one is required private connection. So we know that only cloud VPN and interconnect can certify this. And the bandwidth of 20 gigabyte per second. For that, then we can rule out cloud VPN and can accept only interconnect. Out of the four answer provision provided below, then we can select only A, create VPC and use dedicated interconnect. Next question, 118. Your company has an application running on multiple compute engine instance. The application to communicate with an on-premise service and it requires high throughput via internet IP while minimizing latency. So the same, I highlight the key information, high throughput and internet IP. So we know that only interconnect can justify. And out of these, we can root our VPN or peering and accept only the answer D, configure cloud dedicated interconnect connection. So I have just finished my presentation on the topic of hybrid connectivity. And I hope it's useful to you. If you like, please share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.